Sunday sermon for December 8, 2019. My heart is a bit heavy today as I mourn the passing of an inspiration in the building of this church, an inspiration in the person of the Reverend Dr. Clay Evans, pastor of the Fellowship Baptist Church, Chicago, organizer of that church. He started his church with just five members. And it grew into an outstanding fellowship of believers in the city of Chicago, Illinois. Never shall forget the conversation that we had as I drove Reverend Evans to his hotel room after he preached at Greater New Bethel in Inglewood. He had a room at the Sheridan out near LAX. And it fell my lot to drive him and his Chicago traveling companions to their hotel. And never shall forget the conversation that we had. Hmm. Clay Evans is gone. Earl Pleasant through whom I met Clay Evans, is gone. Jerome Fisher, my pastor in Compton, is gone. Langster, that hair's pretty gray up there. And I know that I'm going to have to do like Clay. I'm going to have to go on to the other shore. Sometimes, the Lord sneak up on me and he'll say to me, you think you're doing this thing, but you're not doing it. I'm doing this thing, the preaching and the church here. <laughs> I don't know how I stumbled upon the text for this message. It had to be a supernatural operation because last Sunday's message was out of the Mayor Francis Adams uh, collection. And I didn't feel led to go back to that. So I looked at old Russell Spray and found in his sermons an outline that suits my case today. Lo and behold, that outline grounded in the same huh, book and chapter of the last week's message had no intention to design it like that, but the Lord fixed it. So here we are again in 1 Corinthians chapter number 10, as opposed to verse 13 that I preached last week. We want to look at verse 4 today. It says there, they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. Subject for today's message is my rock. Hmm. My rock. My spiritual rock. And as I go through this message, if I don't say spiritual rock and just say my rock, you know that I'm talking about spiritual rock. message artistically designed by Russell Spray has four divisions. First is that I have a rock of redemption. Hmm. The songwriter says, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. 
I needed to be redeemed. <laughs> a rock of salvation. A rock of redemption. Under Acts 4 and 12. Christ, my friends, is the door by which I came into salvation. My friend Margaret DeRose says, I was in a horrible pit. I was there, Margaret, in a horrible pit. But the Lord lifted me. <laughs> ha! The rock of redemption. First Samuel 22 and 47 says, Exalted is the rock of my salvation. Be ye exalted, my Lord. Huh. I was redeemed from a sinful state. And I stopped doing ungodly things. When I repented of my sins and believed in Jesus Christ, everything became new. I was a changed man. Never shall forget it. Huh. Ah, songwriter says, ah, I know I've been changed. Come on, choir. I know I've been changed. Oh, I come from a long ways. But the Lord changed me. My friends, I want you to know that if you make a total commitment to Christ, the Holy Spirit will clean you up. You become redeemed, sanctified. My rock of redemption. Thank you, Lord. And on top of the redemption, I got restoration. The church fathers tell us that man was made under the laws of God. And by his voluntary transgression, he fell away from his happy and holy estate and was condemned to eternal ruin. <laughs> Our ancestor, Adam. But, there is a way. The first step in that way is redemption. The second step in the way is the rock of restoration need to be restored Christ is my protection <sighs> Isaiah 40 Isaiah 32 and 2 mentions a great rock in a weary land a weary land America weary land when the storms of life are raging, Jesus is my rock in whose shelter I can hide. Yes, Christ is the Christian's rest. When I become exhausted uh, by the busy and trying times that I face, I find healing through prayer. And I find healing in the promises found in my Bible. Hmm. And I shall evermore stand on the promises of God that cannot fail. 
Though the howling storms of doubt and fear assail, by the living word of God, I shall prevail so long as I stand on the promises of God. Christ. Whew. My friend. Uh, Christ restores my strength in times of need. Yes, he is my rock. Of restoration. When I trust him completely of course. Ooh, my spiritual rock. <laughs> my. Rock of restoration. My rock of redemption. Lo and behold. I got another rock. Of resolution, R E S O L U T I O N, my rock of resolution. Next month, there are going to be a lot of New Year's resolutions. How many will be kept? I'm thinking about my rock, my spiritual rock of resolution. My friends, I want you to know that according to Psalms 40 and 2, God established my goings. Has he established your goings? Today, many Christians making those New Year's resolutions next month. <laughs> you know how they go. But many Christians today are undependable. They're up and down. they in and out. And you never know where to find them. My friend, Christ wants us to be established whew, according to 1 Peter 5 and 10. If you give Christ first place in your life, <laughs> And trust him, he will lead you to make right choices, right decisions, go in the right direction, end up right destination. I just want to tell you that because I am determined to live for Christ, he has established my life. Established my goings. <laughs> Gave me a good credit score. If that is in any, if the credit score is any indication of character, reliability, responsibility, financial stability, God has given me that. And he keeps me from falling. <clears throat> my rock a restoration. Huh. My spiritual rock. I'm almost through. Redemption. Restoration. Resolution. But my friend, the last division in this message has to do with my rock of rejoicing. Tell you a little quick story. An old preacher was once asked, "What would you do, Reverend, if, if when you got to heaven, you discovered that heaven was not what you expected it to be?" The preacher said, "I'd shout hallelujah! Whew, I had so much, so much fun, such a good time getting up here. My rock." Of rejoicing. Isaiah 42 and 11 says, Let the inhabitants of the rock sing. I live in the rock. Let the inhabitants of the rock, of the rock sing. And let them shout from the top of the mountains. Hmm. Rejoice now. 
My friends, some Christians dishonor Christ by wearing a long or a unhappy face. And in so doing, they fail Christ. Listen. Christ expects us to work for him joyfully while we are here on earth. According to Psalms 37 and 4, we whose sins are forgiven, we who are cleansed, we who are made whole, whew, on our way to heaven should be the happiest people on earth. That's right. Are you happy today? You can be. Ah. Oh. Rejoicing here on earth, we shall also rejoice with him in the life to come. Over, as Reverend Clay Evans said, on the other shore, he is the rock of ages. My rock. My rock. In a weary land. Are you weary? Are you tired? Are you being bombarded with unwelcome stimulus? Are you being vexed? Whew. If you are, you are a prime candidate for weariness. And in like manner, a prime candidate for a new life. Never shall forget that day in Washington, D.C. when I was really redeemed. The leaves on the trees had meaning and significance. The songs that the birds sang were just so melodious. I became a new person. Are you tired of the skin that you're in? Do you want to become a new person? Has sin wrecked havoc? Is your past always coming up before you to hold you down when you want to rise? You need a rock. That's what you need. You need the rock in your weary land. All you got to do is say the sinner's prayer. God is listening and waiting to hear your prayer. The angels are waiting to write your name down in the Lamb's book of life as a saved soul. If you just say this, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe that you died for my sins, my sins, which are many. And I'm sorry for my sins. And I thank you for the new life that I can find in you. I believe that God raised you from the dead. And I just ask that you would save this weary, tired, sin-sick, disconsolate soul in my body today. My friends, God will hear that prayer and he will answer that prayer. I know because I called on him. And he heard my cry, pitied my every groan. So long as I live and trouble rise, I shall hasten to his throne. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, able to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy. To him, the only wise God, to whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now, henceforth, and forevermore. Stand on the rock today.